Hi, I'm Peter Hawley, President and CEO of Fable Copper Corp. I would like to tell you about our latest 2021 field result, where we sampled on surface 2.96% copper over a width of 1.7 meters on the Harris Copper Currents, and also gained access to the only entrance in the underground workings. Now remember, as I explained in previous releases, 1% copper per ton is equal to 22.2 pounds. This is Fable Copper's fourth set of results of the 2021 surface field program on its Musqua Copper project, comprised of the Neal property, previously referred to as the North Block, and the Toro property, previously referred to as the South Block, all located in northwestern British Columbia. The company also holds the rights to the Bronson property further to the south, and we will report our findings on the Neal property first, and then followed by the Toro, and then the Bronson. We started the new year by reporting our findings on the Lady Luck occurrence in the south end of the Neal property. This was followed by the Mac occurrence to the north, the 8A copper occurrence further to the north, and now the Harris copper occurrence further to the north again, almost in the middle and to the east portion of the Neal property. Host rocks of the Harris copper vein occurrence consists of fine-grained gray slates finely interbedded or layered with black shales. Sometimes in the field, we call this zebra rock. The portal of the Harris vein was located at an altitude of 1,782 meters vertically and a rubble sample D723396 taken at the audit entrance consisted of quartz, which was dark rusty brown on the weathered surface, and white with sub netted texture and in part fracture filling with yellow to yellowish gray sulfides of pyrite and chalcopyrite with 5% chalcopyrite and 10% pyrite. And the pyrite encapsulates or encloses the chalcopyrite in places. This sample assayed 2.96% copper. From the mouth of the added, at the 1,782 meters vertically altitude to the internal Harris vein is 30 meters, where the drift follows the Harris vein for another 118 meters. The drift ranges from two to three and a half meters in width and two to three meters in height. The Harris vein proper is composed of bull white quartz and carbonate with blobs, blebs, and stringers of chalcopyrite which at time can be massive. It appears the vein is truncated by the nose of a synclinal fold. The area of the termination of the Harris vein by the folding, we see parallel tension fractures, renealed or healed with bull white quartz and carbonate. The photo beside me is the compressional tension veins formed during the folding of the slate shale units. As you look closer, you can see not only the displacement, but the later stage renealing of the tension fractures with quartz carbonate. That's the white veining you see. Well, that's all the report from Recon on the underground drift on the Harris vein. We are now heading for surface. Kind of feel like one of the seven dwarfs. The surface expression of the Harris veining, 19 meters above the underground added, was sampled over a width of 1.7 meters. Channel sample D-723228 consisted of quartz carbonate veining with sheared siltstone and graphitic shales on the contact. Occasional bugs were seen and moderate malachite copper alteration with a trace of azurite. 1 to 2 percent disseminated chalcopyrite all over with patches of chalcopyrite. The channel sample was taken over a width of 0.6 meters and returned 3.76% copper. Quite the view from on top of the hill, or maybe I should say mountain, as we're over 1,800 meters vertically. Now, the next channel sample, D723229, contained quartz with minor carbonate associated with micro fractures, minor malachite copper alteration, and with 1% copyrite. Again, 
as disseminations, blebs, and small fracture fillings. A trace of boronite was seen, and this chip sample was taken over 0.7 meters and assayed 1.49% copper. Chip sample D-723230 next to the previously described completed the sampling of the width of the vein over the entire 1.7 meters in width and was composed of quartz veining which was dark brown rusty patches on the weathered surface with moderate malachite copper alteration and with 2 to 3 percent calcopyritis patches. This 0.20 meters channel sampled returned 5.72% copper. Now, if you take those three samples and do the weighted mean average of these continuous chip samples over the 1.7 meters, it averages 2.95% copper. Please follow us on our Musqua project in Northern British Columbia. This is the fourth copper occurrence reported this year. And as you know, we have over 20 occurrences on our Musqua property. Please follow us as we release the 2021 expiration sample results and eventually drone results.